So welcome everyone to another Digging Deeper, this time into the uh, classic anime film Akira, or Akira, or Akira, or Akira, I don't know, however you want to call it, pronounce it. Um, I just call it Da, the movie. Um, <laughs> bum, bum, a bum. Mm-hmm. Um, or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm all yeah, I'm all yeah. And so, one of the reasons I want to talk about the film is because it is uh, such a classic. It is a film that it you know, became one of those films that, as an anime film, everyone, everyone kind of uh, wanted to see. It was meant to see, so to, so, so to speak. You're very much encouraged to watch this movie. Uh, and like I know when I went into to Akira, I expected something very different than what it actually was. Um, and so I think for me, the, the big thing about Akira is the overall tone and feel of the film, which I think it does establish pretty quickly. Um, but a lot of the, a lot of the material I've seen on Akira, like AMVs and such, would often be presented as more like an action movie. Um, obviously big and apocalyptic and so forth, but as more action-y. And I think really Akira is much different darker in tone than that i think it is much more serious it has its goofy elements certainly um but the tone is definitely very apocalyptic um i think once i realized it's sort of this vision of apocalypse that's when i was like oh i i get what it's doing w- what are your guys thoughts on just sort of the overall tone and impression that akira uh, had on you that um I mean, it is uh, very serious, and you're right about AMVs, um, you know, portraying it. You see a lot of action in the AMVs, whereas the movie, there's actually a lot of exposition and, and um, you know, talk about what's going on. And um, it's not as dense as, like, say, Ghost in a Shell, where sometimes mm-hmm. you kind of have to really kind of rewind a little bit and go, what did they say again? Mm-hmm. This is more straightforward, I think. But it is definitely apocalyptic. Well, I mean, the first um, 30 seconds of <laughs> yeah. the movie kind of yeah. you know, tells you what's going on right there. And um, But it is, it, it, it's for me, um, you know, I, I, you know, we were talking a little bit about the manga versus the, the mm. anime earlier. I saw the movie before I read the anime. Mm. Or I, was, I saw the anime before I read yeah. the manga. Yeah, me too. And so, it, so you, it, it, okay, yeah, yeah. Mm. And, it's, and it's totally... No. And then once I learned the reason why later on, but it is two to almost two completely separate, different different stories. But yeah. it's still, the um, the tone of it is just uh, you know if you're looking for a happy go lucky movie, this is not going to be it. <laughs> but it also reminded no, but it also reminded me of the time to- of of that um, towards the end of the boom time for for Japan in the 80s mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. going into you know the 90s when things started getting a little rough. The Japanese economy, and um, you see a lot of that with Colonel uh, Shima, mm-hmm. and he's talking about that kind of stuff. And uh, it's just, it's, and the thing about this movie is that it is with you the entire way, mm-hmm. even in the lighter moments. Everything there's, whether it's visually, someone's saying something, something's happening, whatever it is, it is just like omnipresent. It's just, just like. Yeah, here's all the things that the human beings are doing right here, and here is doom. Like you know, with the fist, it's going. We're, we're waiting. It's coming. It's coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. John, how about you? Well, just I mean, in that first thirty seconds, setting the tone for the entirety of the film, it's like <laughs> you don't. Even though there are you know the injected moments of of humor, um, the kids going to their high school and getting in trouble mm-hmm. with their principal mm-hmm. shut up bam, <laughs> shut up bam. discipline you know, discipline like, discipline like, just, just wailing it. it's funny yeah and there's you know and the fight class. with the clowns there's plenty you know, there's, mm. so there's, there's plenty of action going on in this but it's just like you can't yeah. everything is so um tainted from that point forward if you cut off that first 30 seconds it would be kind yeah. of just a a, a deep inner urban city kind of street punk bike punk gang mm-hmm. you know what i mean it, it really wouldn't have the same kind of like sort of damocles because you know yeah. even in not having I, I never read the manga so i have mm-hmm. no idea what the two separate stories are but even in that after that first 30 seconds you just have this air of anticipation that mm-hmm. something so cataclysmic has happened yeah 
that it just doesn't bode well for anything that's going to happen from this point onwards. So either it's going to be a cataclysm on the small scale, so mm-hmm. you're going to have the bite gang, you're going to, you know, interact with these characters, you're going to develop a sort of, you know, feeling towards some of them or one of them or something, mm-hmm. and bad things will happen to them, mm-hmm. or more societal bad things will occur so it's like you can't you never escape that sense of like foreboding doom (laughs) exactly and in fairness i'm flipping open the the the, uh uh the manga and uh here's here's the first page right there's earth here's the second page so (laughs) it's definitely establishing the same tone (laughs) Mm. yikes Mm. we're gonna start this manga off with death (laughs) Uh yeah Um, Tens of millions, wholesale, done. Over. Uh, yeah, no, totally. And I think you're absolutely right that I that setting that up and starting with, you know, Apocalypse um, really tells the audience that this is not going to end well. And so it gives right. context to everything that you're seeing. Um, one of the things that I think... So for, th- for those curious, um, the movie is basically like the first sixth of the story of Akira, of the manga. Um, much of the, and I hope this isn't a spoiler, but the, essentially the story of Akira, the manga, is the story of Tetsuo and, frankly, Akira, post what happens in the, um, uh, in the um, arena, amidst all the destruction of, of, of Tokyo and the new society they try to create, basically. How, basically dealing with Tetsuo's powers so, essentially, Tetsuo ga- yeah. gaining his powers is the setup to the main story of Akira, of how do you live with a godlike being amongst your midst who is also a um, horny, annoying teenager, um, basically. <laughs> and and the happiness just continues. Oh, uh, see, I think you muted. Oh yeah, I imagine it got better and better. Oh, oh uh, sorry, one, one second, guys. I'm not getting their audio. Um, oh. Can you all hear that? For some reason. Not getting any of their audio. Always something, right? We're always getting some weird little audio thing. How did we? Can, can anybody hear us on the on there? the other side of One this? One moment, please. Please stand by. Stand by. Eye on control. As I reset their. Uh, their audio. Um, are you guys there now? I cannot hear you at all. Great! Perfect. Okay. Hold on. Um, can I engage that back in? Can I change that? No, that's so bizarre. Uh, the audio just completely cut out for them. Discord's being funky. But just give me a minute. Um, I'm going to... Reset that. No, that isn't helping at all either. Cute. Uh, try that. No. Yeah, that's very bizarre. Uh, they have just completely decided that Discord gets no audio at all. Uh, and that, no, I got audio there. I got audio there, and it's not coming in over, uh, over, out of Discord. Great. Um, okay. We will try this. When all else fails. Um, that's probably isn't gonna do anything. How do I change? But that's their audio. Gah! This is so frustrating. Sorry, everyone. Um, you hear me? Can you hear any of them? Because um, I'm not hearing anything. Um, from them. Uh, there's no mute on them. Uh, I can manually mute and unmute them, but that doesn't change anything. Uh, their their volume is 100%. Um, let me 
change. Oh, is it that thing with like the, the voice, the audio output device? Probably is. Um, are you, can you hear me? Can you, can you guys speak? Try that. Try that. Uh, we will try that. No, that's not it. Sometimes uh, they decide to change the output device. That shouldn't make a, a, a fact. Um, try retaining the chat for video. Hmm. That shouldn't be that. Video settings. Uh, all right, so let me try this. I'm going to discount the call and then I'm going to like actually restart Discord. Because uh, it likes to stick around quite understandably. So we'll try that one more time. This will all get cut out. In the, in, the, in the final process. Oh, there's an update. Maybe that has something to do with it. So Discord is now updating, installing update 305. So perhaps that is my issue. We will find out momentarily as it restarts. Uh, and then let me move it over so you all can will actually be able to see it. Uh, watch this not work. Uh, let's see here. Can you guys say something? Nope, still not working. Great. Um, wonderful. What could it possibly be? Um, the voice is correct. The other stuff is correct. Um, I will try muting them again. No. Um, it's just decided not to do anything. Unless maybe it's, I mean, there's something else. Oh, there we go. Okay. Bruh! It's okay. It's all right. It's, it's, it's fine. Hardware issue. Hardware issue. Um, the connector on my audio cables got unplugged. And so we weren't getting any of your audio. Okay, so that's what was going on. All right, we'll, we'll get back to it here. Um, we'll, we'll make it work. All right, apologies, everyone, for the confusion. There we go. We're back. It's all good. Everything's fine. <laughs> apologies. <laughs> Where were we? Um, oh. Uh, dark tone. Uh, uh, so the... the um, yeah, it, it is about... Um, Tetsuo living with his powers, basically, instead of just what happens in the, in the movie. Um, so that final piece where it's sort of, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> I am Tetsuo. Tetsuo. Mm -hmm. That's like basically the entry into the manga. It's like that's, that world. That's basically the end of um, volume one or volume two of six. Maybe volume yeah. two. Uh -huh. Volume two of six. Um, and then after that, it's him living in it sort of in establishing his society very broadly um, mm. in Neo Tokyo. Interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. So very different in sort of uh, themes and such from the movie. Uh, obviously some of the same stuff is there. Um, but, uh, but that, and there's much more expanded roles for a lot of the characters. Um, yeah. So there's, there's a great, there's a great panel of Tetsuo kind of like standing there with his hands in his, in his coat pocket looking down at, at Akira. Akira's just playing, what was he, playing or drawing? I don't know what, mm. but he's being a kid. Akira, you know, this guy-like being is being a kid. Right. There's Tetsuo kind of looking at him. The Tetsuo look on his face is just like, uh, I deal with this in school. God, it's what, it's, it's oh, one of the great elements this of is my tour, this, is my, this is my tour guide to immortality. Great. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the it's one of the great things about the manga, and I don't think it's a spoiler to say this is that so Akira apparates and is an an ongoing character in the manga, and so Tetsuo has this 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 you know figure where he's like, I need him, but also he is vastly more powerful than I am, so I can kind of lord it over everyone else, 
but I have this weird relationship with Akira because he could just like remake the world in an instant, as far as I know. Um, wow. So, so Tetsuo has to kind of tread lightly in in some ways around Akira. Well, Akira's just going, eh, whatever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, Happy go lucky kid. Yeah, it's like I'm God. I'm past Same. all that. So it's all fine. <laughs> um, so let's talk about some of the themes of of, of this film because uh, I think one of the things about Akira is the fact that it there's. <sighs> It's not a particularly complex film in terms of, like, the plot, in terms of, you know, getting from A to B, but there's there's a fair amount of subtlety in terms of the different pieces to it, um, and it, it is kind of weaving in a lot of stuff, um, and I think one of the things that surprised me about Akira is that one of its themes is kind of friendship and companionship, and the fact that, like, that bond between Kanada and Tetsuo is ultimately really what was keeping Tetsuo going you know, all the way through, um, despite the fact they're all yeah. these punk kids. Well, you know, Tesuo's initial backstory in the in the movie is just you know, look when you, if you pay attention. When I, the first time I watched it, I really didn't get it. Wasn't mm-hmm. really paying attention to that that part of the ethos. But then we watch it again, and you realize what's happening at Tetsuo as a little boy, where basically his father is just like going, "I can't take care of this kid. Here yeah. you go." And you know the 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 uh, guardian woman mm. of the day daycare or uh, or orphanage. I was gonna say, you I know, it's an him, orphanage. Yeah, takes, yeah, orphanage, and takes him, and they both bow, and the guy cannot bow quickly and run away and not mm. fast mm. enough. And so Tetsuo is completely abandoned. It's not like he was just left on the doorstep and then somebody yeah. knocked on the door and ran away. There was a whole formality to it. Well, and you see the shot of him so, at yeah. his door with all of the mail. You know, piled up in the door. So clearly, yeah, they're yeah, gone. He's trying, wait, mm. right home. Yeah, they they left his his butt behind, and uh, you know, just and then you know, just that touching scene with the uh, Canada uh, coming. I say Canada. 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 Uh, coming <laughs> Canada. Canada. Canada? No, Canada? Um, Canada coming in and saying, "Is this yours?" And it has that little, you know, little action robot. figure mm, and yeah. robot, and they mm. just kind of bond over that and then yeah. you know just that montage at the end and it's funny how that montage f- happens at the end yeah when you kind of get an idea but then you know you get a little bit more disturbed feeling and, uh, and i wish that there were successive movies that went along with the manga to this because you realize that here's this i am tetsuo so here's this guy like being with a really messed up mm. i mean is that yeah. you know yeah that you know so totally um, one, of the, one of the things I think is interesting the first time you see Akira, oh, sorry, Tetsuo in Kaneda it's with Tetsuo on Kaneda's bike and yeah. Kaneda co- coming out and going so you think you can handle it? and Tetsuo being all I'm 15 I'm and, um, yeah. and it's, it's this it, it, it's great sort of character because you can see Kaneda's not you know, he's not offended like he's not threatened by Tetsuo at all. He's just like, oh, you know, you, you think you can handle it? Yeah, sure, whatever. You know, you, you should get whatever. You know, Kani does not even, you know, um, everything going on in Tetsuo's mind is not even registering with Kanada, right? It's just, it's completely right, yeah. different yeah. levels. Um, it's one of the things I liked in the in the manga, which I think comes across more in the, in the, the movie more I thought about it, is that Kani is a moron. He is just a complete <laughs> idiot. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like in the destroyed stadium when he's yelling at Tetsuo, like, come out here and fight me! Come on! It's like, dude, the guy's got Thanks, like dude. godlike powers, and you're seeing this happening in front of you, and you're just like, oh, I'm going to punch Tetsuo's, you somewhere. Tetsuo's response to that is just class. He's just like, hell are you? <laughs> you know what I can do to you? Yeah. Right now? Well, and th- that's one of the interesting things, though, is that, um, and this is something I, that I forget how long it took me to catch on to, um, when Kaneda first comes up to Tetsuo um, in the ruins of Akira's you know, lab thing, and he first has the laser gun, um, he comes up and he is deliberately trying to cheese Tetsuo off. Yeah, that yeah. whole scene, because he, suddenly he's not funny, he's not any of his normal things, he's like... What words can I use to piss off Tetsuo right now? Because that's the only chance I have. Yeah. 
and it's something that he kind of returns to over and over when he can remember it, um, is this idea that, you know, um, if I can get him off balance emotionally, then I have a chance because then he's kind of, uh, you know, unfocused. Right. There's a neat yeah. moment. Well, it's like getting getting your uh, your evil protagonist to monologue. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's that moment. If you can get your 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 evil guy being like, "Well, here's my plan. And I'm going to do this." And it's like that's perfect because then when I'm moving my hands this way to fire the laser rifle, you're not going to notice. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so, what are some of the other sort of themes there that that leapt out at you guys? Uh, the whole political corruption. Mm. You know, that is exactly I'm what I was going to say. I'm like, the entire corrupt system. Mm -hmm. I love that whole entire scene of the city politics happening right there in that room, that opulent room. <laughs> and you see these guys who are just like varying degrees of self-absorption to not caring to just incompetence and everyone's screaming at each other. The, the 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 mayor or head counselor or whoever what he mm -hmm. whatever he is you know with the, with the you know bald with the with the little bit of beard he's just sitting there you know <laughs> doing his glasses like yep other day at the, at the, at the job mm -hmm. and Colonel Shima is sitting there and you can tell Colonel Shima just wants to pull out his, his oh yeah his and just start going, I, I don't like you I don't like you I don't like you no mm -hmm. but that scene is great because when you look at actual real politics mm -hmm. and. In, in other countries and, and things like that and you see periodically on YouTube videos this effect where how like violent it almost gets oh, yeah. in those meetings yeah. you know like when you look at the Japanese parliament the South Korean parliament and they start getting at each other and they yeah. they they get in your face heck they, it's no joke look at question time for the prime minister of England <laughs> I know, right? Well, a few years ago, there was a there was a video about the Indonesian parliament, yes. and it, it was the video that somebody grabbed the microphone, little whip stand thing, mm -hmm. and just started hacking away <laughs> at the opposition. And it's just like, okay, Woo! so when you had the two older guys like, shut up, you old coot, what are you doing? I don't know what, and then all of them turn on the colonel. Mm -hmm. It's your fault. They're like, oh, wow. Somebody's got to be blamed. Somebody's yeah. got to be blamed. Yeah. And well, he's got to take the heat. They're all politicians. Yep. And then I love, the, I love how the, the connection to the revolutionary guys is a rat faced looking guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With, a, with a heart with, condition. That's always a great condition. place to be yeah. in a high stress job. <laughs> rat faced little punk. Yeah. With a heart <laughs> well, and that's another thing that I, th I think helps to motivate Colonel Shima is, that, and again, one of those things I don't think a lot of folks notice the first time around is that Colonel Shima is on his way out. You know, he has nothing left to lose. He is trying to hold this together as best he can. But one of the reasons he can pull all these resources together is because he's like, screw it. Like, they're going to fire me anyway. I'm going to do yeah. the best I can in my situation. And, you know, politics be darned. Well, I mean, at the very beginning, doesn't one of the council members say to him, if I were you, I would put your affairs in order? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But no, absolutely. He's going to be hung out to dry as the sacrificial <laughs> lamb for, for the disaster that was looming. Uh, now, Brent, you, you would know this uh, because you read the manga. Isn't it interesting how they reuse the character in the, an in the anime at where the, the guy in the suit is trying to arrest Colonel Shinoma right before Colonel Shinoma says, yeah, okay, right. Over. And in the manga, he's actually a spy. For oh, Shima. right. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So his own so spy kind of arrests him or tries to? <laughs> no, no. In the movie, he's he plays a different character. He plays mm -hmm. a, a uh, official of the government. In the in the manga, he's actually a spy for Colonel Shea. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It's kind, yeah. of, it's kind of a difference between the anime. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the religious leader is essentially yes. the... Um, has a very different role. I will not spoil it in the manga. Um, yeah. Very, very different. Like that, that is an ongoing character with like stuff to do throughout the the manga. Um, but just kind of became yeah. as a side character, and because when we have so much time. All right. Yeah, it, it doesn't die a a semi humorous death. In, uh, <laughs> Save me. Uh, movie. Yeah, the sliding off of the uh, the uh, the road bridge into the sea. Get by a car on a bridge, sliding into the sea. You can't get more. Well, and, well, exactly. Well, what I also found interesting, speaking of the political corruption, is how, you know, it's implied that a lot of the 
um, uh, industry of the city is reconstruction and rebuilding and, and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah. And I find it interesting the implication of the tie-in to the fact that all of the uh, construction in real Tokyo after World War II was this real dirty business with a lot of politicking and a lot of money changing hands and so forth. So I wonder if that, that, that isn't sort of playing off the audience and go, oh, I know what's happening here. All these people are, you know, dirty money, getting all this construction yeah. work that, done. Yeah, definitely. It, it seems to be. Thing. And, and of course, you have that, that wonderful scene with the rat face guy with all the money. Uh, and there's That's a good right. example yeah. of where, uh, okay, um, uh, translators, mm -hmm. As an American, especially as an American, like, 16-year-old watching Akira for the first time, I didn't know that was money. All that, all those things right. he's stuffing into that thing just right. look like certificates or something. I, I don't know. Well, a number of them are. A number of them mm. are, like, stock certificate kind mm -hmm. of documents. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was like, that would have been nice to know that, oh, he's getting away with all the cash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's hightailing it out, for, out, of, out, of the, out of the state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See ya. And... and to go to, going back to um, the storytelling, mm. wouldn't you like to know how those those guys wound up in the bathtub? The... Dead in the bathtub. I mean, you can you can you know how they got there, but you don't see them how they got. So as he's trying to close the, the overfilled case. Oh him, yeah, box, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you walk back and you see that, and you see like his his servant and his political mm -hmm. appointee yeah. mm -hmm. are just stuffed into the tub. Yeah. and you're just like Which he wasn't physically well, capable of doing that. <laughs> doing? Mm -hmm. Right. But I mean, it might have been a last man standing kind of thing. So it's yeah. like the guy who was burning stuff. You know, his assistant mm -hmm. there. He might. You know, it could easily have been the off camera thing. Was like, okay, you finish burning those, shoot those two. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. shoot that guy, go into the bathroom, and then little rat face man walks up behind the guy who just shot the other dude, shot him in the back of the head, he falls in the bathtub. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, yeah, that would make sense. You're clearing out all the, the people who could talk. Yep. Also known as the beginning of one of the Batman movies. It's Joker in it. Uh, Remember the whole scene? They're, they're, they, they keep killing each other. Right. Oh. As they're going through the, through the heist. Oh, okay. Mm, yeah. I, I don't remember anymore. <laughs> Probably it's been a long, reference. long time <laughs> since the Batman things. Um, I'm just yeah. kind of curious as to the, the start of the film talks about after World War Three. Yes. And it's like, do yes. they in the manga go into... Because Akira awakening to his power wouldn't be World War Three. It would be Tokyo goes up in this hellish, you know awakening god holocaust mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean the rest of the world came to an end does it um akira yeah. was not a kid that was a bomb that another foreign power exploded on japanese territory so we need to go to war interesting because they that's that's not yeah really terribly they, they clear that. about why there is a world war three mm -hmm. i'm like okay yeah. yep was it to stop Japanese development with with whatever Akira was doing because they had that entire little you know uh, children's crash mm -hmm. where they were training other kids the, mm -hmm. the three kids to utilize powers like a, Akira so mm -hmm. did somebody bomb them to shut that down oh no 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 no, no. I, I, I you misunderstand um, that explosion was Akira that explosion was Akira the Japanese oh, yeah. government yeah. said that that explosion was a foreign power exploding a bomb on Japanese soil that was a cover up. So to cover that was a cover up. Yeah. So did that so was there then genuinely a World War Three? There was, yes. Like they had to respond? Yes. Oh good lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So and, and like one of the ways that you can interpret that is that that's what touched off World War Three was mm -hmm. the cover up was the Japanese cover up. And so that Wow. You know, so that to to try and cover up <laughs> this Akira thing. They go, uh, we got nuked by whomever, or probably the United States, I think, if mm. I remember correctly or not. Um, and, you know, we got bombed, and then everything just went to hell in the AMS. Well, actually, that's an interesting thing, because the Americans show up in the manga. Because yeah. very quickly, they, you know, like a, an American destroyer comes up and goes, oh, hell no, not again. We're yeah. going to fix this. Um, and <laughs> guess what? 
Um, but, wow. but, 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 but they do make it clear that, that the Americans, and it's one of the things I appreciate about the, the book is that the Americans are like, oh no, like we're, we're aware and we're, we're monitoring this and we're not just going to sit back and hope that, you know, the world doesn't get destroyed again. We're going to respond and try to deal with this. And so they do come in and try yeah. to deal with it. Um, See, that's, that would have been some nice additional mm, detail because, yeah. yeah. It, it, you know, it leaves that inevitable question in your mind. It's like, okay, it's 20 years after World War Three. Okay, why was there a World War Three? Well, and that's one of the things I want to get into. What exactly happened? Yeah, is is whether this movie, or how effectively this movie functions as sort of a standalone movie. You know, um, like I know when I watched Akira, especially the ending, I felt like this doesn't feel like the ending I would have written for the movie I just watched. Right. Um, uh, and then when I, when I knew there was a manga and there's a lot more going on, I was like, oh, I guess that's where you have to end. Like, I get it, you know. Not ideal, but yeah. whatever. But I do feel like Akira feels a little... I think incomplete isn't the right word. But that there are those little vestiges that just kind of didn't no, quite I, I agree me. with you. It feels incomplete. Okay. You know what I mean? It's just that um, that's, watching it more makes that more, like, stark mm -hmm. versus having seen it when it first got here to the U.S. You just, you just totally didn't look at those kind of little things yeah. that you're missing because you were sitting there just in awe of what you were watching. <laughs> so it was just like, no. oh, my God, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. And well, it's only the second or third or fourth viewing that it's like, you know, I just, uh... I'm having a feeling I'm missing backstory, and I feel like I don't know where this is supposed to fall in like a timeline. <laughs> but when I watched it for the first time, it was my freshman year of college, mm -hmm. and it was literally um, a friend of mine. It's it's actually the reason why I have so much affinity for for this movie is because it's the movie that um, got me back into anime. Um, oh wow! So, so you know, I mean, there's a huge long story behind that, but anyway. Um, so when we watched it, he, uh, uh, what was his name? Tim, I think it was. He, uh, was kind of, he kind of came in and said, Hey guys, this is a thing called anime. And I was like, Oh yeah, I know what that is kind of. And he said, this is the Kira. He put it on and he had just gotten the VHS type of like, you know, the first week that was sold. Mm, wow. Right. Uh, so I, I got it with no context and mm. so we, we watched it and we watched it, watched it looked at the screen and was just like you know, just like you know like oh my god what have i just seen it's wonderful it's amazing mm -hmm. all these different was colors. it subbed or dubbed um it, no we watched the the uh sub okay oh or, see I, uh, I only ever got yeah. to see the dubbed so for, I, i've seen that I've was seen an experience the sub, oh yeah I've seen the, sub, the uh, first dubbing streamlined dub. the third dubbing mm -hmm. yeah and That's so another the, dubbing you know, oh yeah dub. Yeah, and so uh, you know, after we watched it, our you know top of our heads exploded because it was just <laughs> magnificent. And but there was so much of it we didn't understand, and mm -hmm. so we actually rewatched it that same night. Nice. And that's when you started. That's when we started picking at it a little bit. And it was mm -hmm. over the years, you know, you rewatch it and you go, oh wait a minute, oh wait a minute. And you know that, and then it took me a while to learn that there was an actual manga to it. Mm -hmm. So for me, this was the standalone movie. This was it. And this is all we had. Okay. So this is for years. I was like, okay, this is you know for me, this is just this was just the movie. Mm -hmm. When the manga came out, I'm like going, oh, okay, there's an actual manga on this, and you know, I'll start reading it. I I know I know what the story is. So <laughs> total dialogue. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm getting into it. I'm getting into it. And I'm like going, wait a minute, how many freaking vomit? Wait a minute, the movie was like two hours. How many? How many books are these? Mm -hmm. Like, I went to the comic book store, bought the actual not 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 the vomit oh, books, but you know, the actual issues. I have the first four. I have the wow. first four issues. That's and cool. Before wow. I figured out that, that I went. And, and <laughs> That's going to take a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm sitting there, and, and I'm like going, okay, okay. Wait a minute, how many of these are there? And then, of course, the story was was totally different, and it but it does create a little bit more backstory for the anime. I think the the movie um, wasn't so much incomplete as it was, you know, there was an ending that you had to really stop and think and, and think about. It was the mm -hmm. first time 
had I had really watched something that was like, here's an ending. You're gonna need to think about it and mm -hmm. kind of wonder what this is. What what did you just watch? You realize that it's not about Ken, uh, Kaneda at all. That's about Tetsuo. You know, that's the first real mm -hmm. that you have. You know, and then you kind of go on and you're just like, oh, okay, there's so much more to this movie. And beforehand, like for me, my my whole anime experience was like, you know, morning. Yeah, to give right. folks an idea. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No, I thought it was like yeah. two or three of them. Sure. Like, yeah. You know. And um, and so you know, my my anime was limited at that point to Speed Racer, Aqua Boy, mm. Kimba, uh, Ultron. Uh, spotty viewership of Macross Robotech and mm. Castle Kegelistro, uh, mm. that Lupin movie, which I totally love to this day. Oh, yeah. Um, but beyond that, I, I really didn't have much anime experience. And this just brought me back in, drew me back in. And the biggest reason was because of the technical aspects of the movie. Mm -hmm. But the movie itself, for me, for a very long time, was its own thing. And then mm -hmm. once you read the manga, you kind of go, you kind of go, and then you read the story about how he had to create the ending and work his way backwards right. to the movie. And then you realize you don't need to read the manga to watch the movie, by the way. Sure. You don't, right, you don't right. need to do that. So in that sense, it's a standalone. But if you do read the manga, so much more context comes into play that makes things a little bit more understandable. Like the whole, that there was a World War Three and there was a reason for that World War Three. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think one of the other things that we get, um, and apologies for suddenly being on the surface of the sun, um, my lights decided to go high. Um, the, uh, I'm being attacked by Canada, apparently. Um, or Tetsuo. Um, or Canada. Yeah, okay. Or yeah, okay, Canada. Uh, darn Canada. The, um, the, the one thing I think that, that is, a, is a sacrifice to some extent in the, the movie is the female characters. Um, watching it back this time around, you know, Kay is basically just pulled around by fate. She's like some random flunky in this organization yeah. and then is just pulled around and then becomes basically Kilko's puppet. Um, Kilko is there to be, you know, magical um, um, oracle girl who just is, right. spouts mysteries. And then poor Cowrie. I mean, you know, we get this long eulogy for the other guy who, sure. who dies. You know, Cowrie is just trying to be a, a, a girlfriend. Um, you know, yeah. she goes down and everyone yeah. immediately forgets she exists. And it's like, mm, yep. mm, mm. Um, and, yeah. uh, and, and I, you know, I will acknowledge the fact that the, you know, these teenage boys are not exactly the most, you know, sensitive souls in the world. Um, but still, the, the movie, you know, from a feminist perspective, this movie does not make a lot of high marks. Um, and, uh, no. and, and, and the manga, at least those characters are more fleshed out. You get more going on uh, uh, from them. But I think just the, the structure of this did not, did not help that a lot. No. Yeah, you're right. Yamagata got more of a duology than anything else. He even got his own bike smashed into a Exactly. Yeah. I'm going to give Yamagata his bike in, in the afterlife. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Boom. And then Kaori is, you know, she gets... Tells her the Tesla tells her to shut up all the time. She gets beaten up, yeah. almost raped. And, you know, all these horrible things happen to this poor little girl. And then at the end of it, she's trying to help him, trying to be nice and loving, and he's just like, mm -hmm. you know, as you know, fifteen-year-old boys are wont to do. Mm -hmm. And then he turns and he loses control, and he starts screaming at Kaneda, who's inside of him, going, mm -hmm. "She's becoming part of me." And you're like, going, "No, yeah, oh, it's gonna oh, go badly." And then you see the scene where she just, it's just like, you know, she gets squished. Mm -hmm. And, you know, did we really need to see the blood bubbling? Oh, uh, yeah. Bear, you know? Um, and, but, but, and that's it. And she is never, but you're right. You're absolutely right. She is never mentioned again mm -hmm. in, the, in the movie. Yeah. And it feels like it's serious. <laughs> and yeah. what's interesting is, and I'm not going to dwell on this, there's a scene later in the manga where, Tetsuo, as this you know all powerful, you know, figurehead, um, in this ruined Tokyo, has let's just say several girls delivered to him, because he could do that, right? Yeah. Um, and then it deals with the fact of like, hey, how traumatic that is for them, and then b like what that's doing to him, like like how how messed up he is 
for 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 that kind of a thing yeah which is what a 15 year old boy would do in that kind of situation right like you can totally see that happening to a biker gang guy um but you get kind of both sides of it of yes this is you know a, a really terrible thing but also like it is a terrible thing like you actually get the consequences of that so yeah. mm. well it's kind of funny that that the way tetsuo is Reminds me of Ron Howard in Twilight Zone episode where he's this little kid. The kid in the uh, and he's got, field. Yeah. And it's like he's got all these crazy oh, powers and everybody has to smile and everybody has to be happy around him. Oh, that. Yeah. Yes. Because <laughs> if they're not, he uses his crazy whatever powers. And yeah, people go to the cornfield, people turn into things, people disappear. And it's like, that's Tetsuo. You know, it's like he's got all this power. It's like that would be inter- that would have been interesting to see the the manga part of it, where you know this is fleshed out more than the movies. Just he's really powerful, he loses control, and here's the end. Well, it's one of the reasons why I think, and again, once you piece this together in, in the movie, you know, Akira is this little boy, and when he comes to his powers and kind of ascends, it's it's this very it's apocalyptic, but it's very controlled. They don't realize that Tetsuo is so messed up. So when Tetsuo starts sort of flaring up, the only experience they have is when a 10-year-old boy did that, or however old you know, Te- uh, Akira was. So, right. you know, um, the fa- so, you know, we know who Tetsuo is. We know that this is going to end very poorly for everyone involved. Um, with military, just like, well, we'll just capture him and drug him up again. It'll be fine. Yeah, you see, their first clue should have been when he started exploding people in the hallway. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. And they should have gone, who's the quietest guy with a gun can that sneak up on the behind him and shoot him in the head? You know, mm-hmm. there's that, there's, okay, for those of you who haven't seen Akira, uh, Akira uh, there's wonderful death scenes in this yes. movie. Yes. Cool. And completely, amazingly detailed in the span of time yeah. that it happens. Mm-hmm. So, I'm, I, and, Again, some of the I shouldn't, but some of these deaths make me laugh. When they're in the the put in the in the kindergarten room, and the big <laughs> column with that one guy, yeah, yeah, you see the guy just kind of going down. Yep. And then yeah. and then you see the guy next to him, and I could just see myself being the guy next to him going with the gun going, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> going down, 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 down. I'm going to live in the country and make haikus about flowers because I don't need this anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, just to hike the hell out of it. This, this is what happens to red shirts when you sign up. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. many of them. And so many of them die in such horrible deaths. And his supporters, yeah. too. I mean, that, that laser gun scene. Well, uh, um, like I really loved, and one, one of the kind of idiosyncratic ones is that one where Tetsuo like, first kills in the hallway. Um, right. And seeing it this time, I realized what they do in that scene is that because he kills the, the, the guys right under a light, it gets dark. Yeah. Yes. Everything else has been very, you know, explosions and violent and very, very visual, very uh, right there. But instead, you see less. And it's way yeah. at the end of the hallway. And you're like, what? Is- oh. And then as you walk to it, you see the hand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, as, yeah. as he's walking, you also hear the the squishy, drippy noise. Where yeah. It's like, oh, <laughs> you just popped those people that. like a meat puppet, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Yeah, that's when that scene from Elfin uh, Elfin Lied, where you know she just oh. uses the body. You know, yeah. she just uses the body as, as a shield, whatever. And you're like, okay, there's that. But there's this movie from 1988 where, you know, just people just die. You remember those deaths a little bit more vividly because mm-hmm. they were vivid. They, mm-hmm. I mean, there was, they didn't, they didn't play around with that. Yeah. that. That was... And what's also interesting about the violence in Akira, which it took me uh, actually this watching to really realize, is that I cannot think of a single satisfying fight scene in that movie. Um, oh. Where, like, you get you know, two people fighting and like a payoff and like one person is the heroic winner. You know, everything's dirty. Everything, you know, there's flashes of violence and then somebody just hits the ground. You know, there's, there's no, um, um, sense. No of, conclusion. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, and it doesn't even feel like, like for a movie with a lot of action sequences in it, um, there's no sort of glorification of, beating people up or or violence or whatever it's all just this very right. desperate thing 
Um, and it also gets into the fact that well, you know, when they're when they're fight, good. I was gonna say when they're fighting on the the overhead uh, highway, yeah, the guy gets hit yeah. in the neck with a pipe with like all kinds <sighs> of stuff. He shrugs it off, and when the cops show up, that same guy, there, yeah, there's no payoff. He just jets off on the bike. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah. well, what? Okay, <laughs> so don't we have the big boss fight? Or something? <laughs> no, yeah, right. So, so the yeah. get to a big boss fight in that first part of the movie is between the leader of the clowns and and Can- Canada and mm-hmm. and. It's not really much of a fight. I mean, it's just a game of chicken. Mm, he loses. Yeah. yeah. And the cops show up, and the cops show up, and it's just funny just watching that scene leading up to it, where they're causing so much freaking chaos mm-hmm. in the city. They blow up the one dude's car with a Molotov. Yep. Cocktail. One of the characters knocks a bike into a restaurant, <laughs> presumably yep. killing nice one of the patrons who is just like, "Wait, what's going on with everybody?" And running away. From yeah. Them. And he's like, "Wait, what's going on?" bike to the head you know mm. and and but the kid stops and looks in and with satisfaction and, and he drives off because he's just like i knocked him down and that's one of the things i wanted to bring up is you know this is late 80s japan biker gangs are a thing right mm-hmm. like like th- this right. is not some theoretical thing these are actual dangerous things and they were in no way represented heroically in japanese media so no. to have a movie have that as your protagonists and then very early on show, and these are not like, you know, um, uh, these are not heroic rebels. Like, no, they are throwing Molotov cocktail at them. But, you know, this is dirty street fighting yeah. just because, basically. Yeah, the bar they hang out where you can get pills and stuff mm-hmm. from behind the bar. So it's, you know, the, the well, underground the drug of, scene. By the way, that's the name of the, of the, of the gang is Capsules. Oh, right. Canada's gang. Canada's gang. With Canada's pill on the back. Mm. Yeah. Was it good for health, bad for education? (laughs) (laughs) I I think that's the slogan. Yeah. Well, they're getting real educated, as you can tell, in that that, that Soviet era, you know, (laughs) school. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Well, and and, and that gets back in... um, uh, Game Escape in the, in the chat is mentioning the Akira Cityscape. Um, and I think it's absolutely true. You know, the, 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 the depth and complexity of that cityscape presented to you is really a character in the film. Um, but it's also yeah. little things like when they're being interrogated by the police, um, you know, before they go back to Something. school, uh, and like there's a guy with a grenade, you know, along with the revolution. Right. And yeah. everyone just, <laughs> boom, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead. Um, but then the camera pans up and you realize they're in an auditorium. Yeah. yeah. It's like a sports stadium thing. Mm-hmm. And like this is something set up very specially because one of the children disappeared. Um, and so suddenly the, the police are mobilized to this whole big investigation thing. They got to do something real quick. Um, and it's one of those little details that I think like consciously you notice, oh, wait, this isn't just a, a regular police room. And then when you connect all the dots, you realize, oh, that's why wow. because of all this. Also, did you notice that the doctor always refers to them as numbers? While Colonel Shima always refers to them as with their names. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's always Did saying Kyoko, and he's always saying number thirty-seven. It's like, mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. No. Well, the thing I with the stadium somewhere. that made me think of is um, Pinochet in Santiago, Chile. Mm. With that was a that was nineteen seventies, uh, yeah, but that would have been in the collective consciousness of that, mm. where you had Pinochet's. Uh, goon squads collecting people in the Santiago Stadium, and that's where you started seeing the disappearances. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. you know, people went into that to that facility to be processed, supposedly, and then they were gone. Mm-hmm. So that I I kind of wondered, yeah. having seen that, it's like you chose very specifically to put this in a sports stadium, and mm. boy, doesn't that feel an awful much like you're <laughs> referencing that. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, and then you, you go outside, and there are all of these armored trucks coming up with all of these people, and you're yeah. like, hmm, hmm. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's real interesting. Um, and it's one of the reasons I, that I, I think Akira does have that power, is that Akira is not simply a science fiction action movie, is because it is pulling in these elements of like government corruption, of like uh, Pinochet, and all all of these things that have resonance throughout history. 
um, and then throws that sort of science fictional element on top of it, uh, which I think makes it very relevant. You know, I love the fact that they you know, they stole all their bikes. You know, um, these are just street yeah. kids who who stole these things. Uh, there's nothing really special about them. They're just kids who happen to stumble yeah. upon this massive conspiracy. Um, yeah, much to their detriment. <laughs> <laughs> They're yeah. probably just like we just sort of stayed in a bar pop capsule. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, it's funny. Well, it, well, I mean, go ahead. I was going to say, you know, the, the one of the opening sequences is is you know the 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 guy, the rebel, you know, who has twenty six and he's mm. the Takashi and he's pulling him through, and you get this, you know, again the violence and how like things you get a sense of like. Uh, there's civil unrest going on mm -hmm. here like and not just like you know people chanting the signs i mean serious stuff is going on mm -hmm. you see the blockades and all this stuff and the fact that there is a running gun battle and stopped traffic mm -hmm. and as they're doing it you know they're 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 showing a, a and <laughs> while they're doing that they're showing commu uh, 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 commercialization <laughs> Like these dogs, <laughs> so, I, you know, yeah. and they're like, oh, oh, I did a happy food, and I'm happy, and I want to eat this. And combined with the the, the, the police, German with the German shepherds, mm -hmm. and German yeah. shepherds, and so there's this little kid who's sitting yes. in the car, yes. and he's watching the thing, and then he sees the German shepherds, he sees the blood, and then yeah. and then one of the German shepherds jumps up, and I just does an excellent headshot to one of the mm -hmm. dogs, kills the dog, and goes on onto the car, and the kid is just like, ah. Mm -hmm. But then, as it moves, as the gun battle moves on, what do you see? The little kids just like, "Ooh, wait, hey, what happened? Yeah, there's more." Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and to me, I, I I you know, if I'd have been that little kid, I probably would have been like sunk down as far down as I could. Go. Just going, mm -hmm. it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You know, mm -hmm. just sucking on my thumb because that's not something you is normal, but in this world, it is. And I think it absolutely is what the, the rat face guy says is you know the, the city is overripe. Um, yeah. You know, it's become yeah. violent. It's become decadent. It's become this, this, this thing, which I think he, you know, one could certainly apply to late eighties Japanese society. A lot of folks were saying that yeah. about that society, um, which again right. gets back to that. But you know, it's, it's one of the one of the funny things is you know, there is there is a lot of those interesting little little moments that are almost funny in that way. Um, I was uh, struck by the fact that when uh, Tetsuo goes up to deal with um, Seoul, the, the Seoul satellite. Yeah. Um, wow. And then uh, kind of is down there. And they have this whole, like, almost Benny Hill sequence of all of the pieces <laughs> dropping and kind of, like, yeah, jumping yeah. away from all of them as they're coming down. And it's, like, legitimate. Like, it's clearly comedy. Like, it's meant to give you that little bit of relief um, uh, in all of that. And then right. there's moments, and I don't think this is, this is meant to be funny, but, like, when the scientist is looking through all this data and he goes... You know, if uh, if uh, if this if this is right, then this this means it is the birth of a new universe. And I'm thinking, so you have a birth of the universe right. sensor. Like you have a way of telling if this is the birth of yeah. a universe. Like, how do you sense that from this data? I just I don't get that. You know, it just seems like a jump. I'm all, all I'm saying. And why, if he knew that, did he just continue sitting there watching that <laughs> ding, 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 thing? And it's just like, uh, wouldn't you have run? <laughs> or the universe tells me Big Bang, and the <laughs> operative part in there is Big Bang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all going to go off, and it's not going to be good for you. And so, it wasn't. <laughs> and, you know, almost every single death in this movie is by Squish. Yeah. It's squished some ways or mangled somehow because you know that's how the doctor ends up mm -hmm. it's the creation yeah. of the new universe mm -hmm. you know and everything it's just all mashed up into the machinery and you're just like going that's a horrific way of dying yeah you know, that's yeah pretty bad i'll take a gun i'll take a gunshot to the head <laughs> thank you very much yeah much like the revolutionary trying to get uh get the kid out I, and, yeah. yeah he was dead Let's just say he was, yeah. at the end of that, he was dead. There was no question about that. Yeah. Um, there was so, no coming back from that one. So speaking of endings no. and speaking of dubs, um, those of you watching who might remember the original dub, the, the, the uh, 
long-remembered streamlined dub, I'll put it that way, which is, uh, you know, people have lots of opinions about. Uh, the very final line of that movie is, I am Tetsuo! Basically. Yeah, yeah. That, that's how they decided to end that. Um, Wait a minute. The one I'm familiar with, it just is very quiet. And it's that very I am Tetsu. That's and, second up. And that was the Japanese ending. That was the Japanese version. is is much quieter. Um, that was the one I saw in the theater. Yeah, and yeah. And, and the new English dub true. is is very quiet. Um, hmm. So yeah, they, and that's the thing is that uh, the original streamlined dub was was, and I I don't know, but I think the assumption was Tetsuo is a, you know, fiery kid. Um, he would, you know, there's, there's yeah. an interpretation in which he would be sort of celebrating this moment. Um, but I do feel like that works better. <laughs> yeah. You know, being, being a little calmer. more, being calmer, being like, ah, oh, I, you know, I've reached my place. Descended, I am aware. I'm well, aware. After once. all the, yeah. all the, you know, laser cutting and the giant machinery and blobby, everything else, you know, the ending of it and him being pulled into the cataclysmic end mm. I, that makes much more sense for him to be he's kind of at peace with it now he's mm -hmm. not this bubbling mass of yeah. out of control crap mm -hmm. things are brought more into focus yeah so it's like that's his transition it's like okay that would make much more sense than like ah, that's, <laughs> ah. Oh, no, like yeah, but you're screaming in pain. It's not like a scream of victory, man, because that was not going well at the end there. No, no. Oh. No. Um. Yeah. Um. Any other what thoughts? The name of the, mm. What was the name of the anime that Otomo was inspired by? It, it, it's it's uh, begins with a Z. Uh, mecha anime robot kid robot. Mazinger Z. And he named all the characters. No, it's uh, Z Zambot three. Uh, Zambot, Zambot, might be Zambot three or or another one. Yeah. Um, Zambot was seventy eight. Well, the reason I say that is because I read somewhere that he Colonel Shima was a a take on the professor character of that. Oh. The name came from the professor character. Hmm. Number twenty six. The numbers are the the. I think number twenty six or twenty eight is the number that was on the palm of the mecca. Oh, and, interesting. Um, God, what is the name uh, of that? Yeah, it's not Zambot three, according to the internet so far. Um, uh, and the internet never lies. The internet never lies. Never lies. Um, we'll have to look that up. That's interesting. It would not surprise me one second. Um, Otomo being Otomo. No, give it. Well, as I say, most creators have what is that the Disney one? They keep putting a one one two on mm. things where it's like, mm -hmm. oh, that's the Cal Cal yeah. Arts room for fine arts and drawing. Mm -hmm. That's the actual room number, and it shows up <laughs> in license plates and like pictures and stuff. It's like, yeah, these are Easter eggs. Because this layer is in Neat. sub one one three eight. You know, THX eleven thirty eight. THX eleven thirty eight, and she's in the sub block. Oh, yeah. yeah it's, Bits and pieces. Um, Wookiee is first spoken in THX, oddly enough, that, that word. Um, really? Yeah, there, it was a, a um, th there's a, a scene where you're, you're hearing uh, radio chatter and it gets like weirdly yeah. modulated. And somebody says, I say a Wookiee on the, you know, on, on Highway 28 or whatever. Um, and it just came out as Wookiee. And people heard it like, what's that word? He's like, that's a good word. I'm going to use that word again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Tetsujin 28. Oh, Gigantor. There oh, we go. Gigantor. Gigantor. Yes. Huh. That's interesting. Um, I will have to look at And unfortunately, there are... Um, it looks like the, uh, the music is composed by uh, a guy named Akira. So, Googling those things is going to be complicated. <laughs> the entire film is an homage to and that day's musical are. score. There we are. Awesome. But that is interesting. You know, Akira is number 28, right? Or is he 38? 28? 28, I think. 28, the, the, yeah. Tejujin 28 go. There we go. That's, that's yeah. a neat little connection there. And Tejujin is the final, yeah. you know, successful robot. 
um, out of all the experimental robots. So yeah, I think you could you could mm -hmm. you could see Akira as being sort of uh, uh, jumping off point, jumping off from from that idea. Yeah, that's cool. Um, anything else you guys wanted to bring up about this 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 little comedy here? This comedy. <laughs> it's fun, fun little rom com. It's, it's such a yes. I mean, the 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 back and forth between K and K and Kaneda is just so charming. Mm. <laughs> exactly, so charming. <laughs> I was gonna say for for its time, it they obviously had Come all on, the money, monies to make this film. No you know? kidding, My they had all the monies gosh. for this film. Because uh, there's an awful lot, a lot of anime out there from the 1980s <laughs> that looks nothing like Akira at all. Yeah, I do like not know. Calling, no offense, no offense, but it, it just to the modern eye, mm -hmm. a lot of the 1980s uh, animes look terrible. And then you look at I mean, Akira, and it visually holds up today. Oh, I mean, man. there's nothing that's really super yeah. cheesy, terrible about it. So no. they had all the money to make this thing, and that's mm -hmm. just pretty damn nice. I mean, Twenty. Yeah. 24 frames per second, 160,000 frames. Mm. They had a 5.5 million dollar budget, and they made new colors for that for that movie. That's what I heard. Like mm. invented new colors. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's it, it was insane. And, and it was insane. Yeah. So imagine just being drunk in college, freshman year, watching it, and just <laughs> going. That was awesome. <laughs> Hell, I don't understand what I watched, but it was awesome. Well, that was the movie theater experience, and none of us were drunk. <laughs> it was a room full of room full of people in Northampton, Mass, sitting there going, "Oh, oh ha, ha!" Oh. <laughs> and then everybody wandering around the streets, being like, "What do we see? What was that about? What the hell happened? I don't explain something to me." As as, uh, as Rebecca put on Discord on September twenty fourth in select theaters. Mm -hmm. They're going to show um, Akira in 4K. Yeah, okay, in 4K. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it's as oh. it's, it's about oh, as close. Good. Yeah, it's about as close as seeing it in like Japanese theaters in 1988 as you can get. Yeah. Mm. That's gonna be a time. Um, I bet you it's gonna be on a Thursday. <laughs> it is a Thursday. In, in like like at a, you know? yeah at a time I can't I can't ever get this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's... yeah. I was thinking camcorder to the theater. That should be easy. <laughs> <laughs> then that, that'll negate the entirety of the 4K experience and run it right back to VHS. Like, hey, look at it. It's great. It's just like VHS. Oh, kill me. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. That is Akira. Uh, yeah, I I still, and I mentioned this in the, in the Discord, I have, like, I, f I feel ambivalent about Akira still. Like, I... I'm impressed by it, but it's still one of those movies that I don't like, but then I don't know that I'm supposed to like it. Like, it's not a film you necessarily do yeah. like. It is just, it's an experience. It's, it's a thing that, that happens to you in a lot of ways. Yeah. 